until the boundary between Hong Kong and China um, is open, then I think the economy of Hong Kong will still be suffering. There's a lot of great talent in Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area, so I think that's a, a real restriction for the movement of talent either from mainland China to Hong Kong or from Hong Kong to mainland China. The advantages of working in Hong Kong for me is that it's a quite dynamic city with a very diversified culture. So if uh, you are a fan of any one of the cultures all over the world, you can easily find a place in Hong Kong to serve your needs. I don't think uh, we are experiencing any brain drain. The real problem for Hong Kong is that there has been misallocation of talent uh, between uh, the sectors that we need to develop uh, and the kind of talents that we currently have. Hong Kong seems to be suffering from the labor shortage, which can be traced back to the outbreak of the pandemic. In his maiden policy address this year, the city's top leader, John Lee, unveiled policies and initiatives designed to draw the world for talent. Admitting that the local workforce had shrunk by about 140,000 over the past two years. The number of visas granted to overseas workers has contracted to nearly 14,000 in 2021, down from just over 41,000 in 2019. Approved applicants under the admission scheme for mainland talents and professionals in 2021 shrank by a third when compared with the number in 2019. With the lifting of the hotel quarantine, you may be seeing a gradual return of crowds to the streets of Hong Kong, but is skilled manpower also flowing back to the city? In this episode of Hong Kong Inquirer, we'll look at which industries are suffering from the loss of labor and consider how this issue might be handled. Mark Tibetz is the managing director of Page Group's Hong Kong and Taiwan operations. Before the pandemic, he crossed the border back and forth from Hong Kong to the Chinese mainland more than a thousand and five hundred times, working in cities like Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Dongguan and Zhongshan. I think the brain drain in Hong Kong right now is primarily due to COVID uh, restrictions. I think most of the people leaving Hong Kong um, in the past 18 months or so have been experienced professionals, um, mid-level experience to senior executives with, with young families whose uh, lives have been restricted, education has been restricted, um, and cross-border travel has been restricted. There's nine cities in, in Guangdong province, there's Macau, but right now no one from Hong Kong can really easily go to any of those cities and do business. Most people in Hong Kong are really looking forward to the boundary between Hong Kong and Guangdong province to be uh, eased. It's true that some of my friends or former colleagues, they choose to leave Hong Kong during the last three years after the, the pandemics. The major reason they choose to leave Hong Kong is COVID restrictions. For example, if they have family overseas, say in Europe or in the United States, it might take them 10 to 20 days quarantine if they want to visit their families, which is a bit too long for them to accept. Therefore, they choose to move to Singapore or other place, continue their careers. Wen Fan came to Hong Kong for his master's degree in 2012. Since then, he has been working in the finance industry for almost 10 years. Now, he is a portfolio manager working for a Chinese bank. He told me how he felt about working in Hong Kong. The reasons why I, I chose Hong Kong to start my career is threefold. So first, Hong Kong has a lot of the opportunities for me to develop my career, especially I decided to work in the finance industry. The second is that um, in Hong Kong, I can easily make a lot of the friends with similar cultural backgrounds. And third is that uh, Hong Kong has a very attractive tax rate, which is uh, lowest in all of the Asia cities and is quite competitive all over the world. In October 2022, Zhong Li announced there would be a two-year visa for top talent who earn annually at least 2.5 million Hong Kong dollars, or graduates from the top 100 universities around the world with relevant working experience. In September 2022, Singapore offered a five-year visa for those with a monthly salary threshold of 30,000 Singapore dollars. 
It looks like it is going to be quite a challenge for Hong Kong to win the global talent war. People like to compare Hong Kong with Singapore, uh, but Singapore doesn't have mainland China to be the support. Uh, Singapore uh, is uh, a hub in Southeast Asia, uh, which uh, is a much smaller economy compared to our country. Uh, many people understand that you know, Hong Kong is the most international city of China. In addition to that, you know, we have a lot of foreign and mainland talents and experts who have been working in Hong Kong in professional services, in legal services, and in finance. So this unique set of talents uh, is uh, very rare in the region. That's Heng Weidan, director of the Asia Global Institute and professor at the University of Hong Kong Business School. He says that travel curbs are just a temporary problem. Yeah, in general, we are losing uh, some population, uh, a few percentage points in one year and a half. But I don't think you know, we are experiencing severe brain drain at the moment. I think part of the reasons uh, is related to uh, our COVID uh, travel restrictions. Some of them chose to live uh, in other Asian economies. But I think you know, once we are back to normal, especially uh, after the Hong Kong government decided uh, to remove uh, quite a lot of the inbound travel restrictions, people are going to come back. Hong Kong recently allowed visitors to some entertainment places like Disneyland, even on the day of their arrival, without a vaccine pass. It boosts foreign booking flights to the city. Professor Dong also says the new initiatives, according to 2022's policy address, are very innovative compared with what we have seen in the past. Uh, in my opinion, this is the first time that I see clear strategies to develop industries in Hong Kong. Uh, the Hong Kong government has uh, learned uh, from other countries and economies' government. They have summarized other places' experiences to develop their own unique set of policies to attract talents and companies. You know, those are very new and very innovative. Uh, we probably need to be a bit more patient uh, uh, about uh, the outcomes. Uh, you know, things are not going to change in a few months or in a year. Uh, but generally, this is a substantial shift uh, in economic policy mindset compared to, you know, what we had in the past two decades. Uh, some people even argue that, you know, the Hong Kong SAR government has finally abandoned the small government, big market ideology. And now they think uh, about the importance of the government to work uh, with the private sector uh, and to create you know, more synergies with the private sector uh, and to have a better balance between the market and the public sector. Rather than the shortage of talent, Professor Dunn says the real problem for Hong Kong is that there has been a mismatch of talent between the industry that we need to grow and the kind of talent that we currently have. Hong Kong still has a lot of high-skilled, highly educated, talented people, uh, but most of them are in finance, professional services, medical services, or in universities. Uh, and we are just lack of IT talents, engineers in the mid-levels uh, of uh, the uh, innovation ecosystem. But at the same time, uh, this is the moment for Hong Kong to think about economic diversification. It is also a moment for us to think about economic transformation. Uh, if we were uh, to become part of the International Innovation Center together with Shenzhen and other Greater Bay Area cities, we probably need to think about industrial policies to broaden our industrial capacity, uh, to strengthen our talent pool, especially in IT, in science and in technologies. The most important thing is, you know, uh, we shouldn't think that solving shortage of talent can be done by talent policies. We need a holistic package of uh, economic policies which involves attracting foreign direct investment, attracting mainland leading companies to invest in Hong Kong, attracting university talents, scholars, scientists to come to Hong Kong. In addition to that, you know, don't forget about our own local strength. We have very strong universities which can uh, train uh, and educate our next generation of scientists uh, and engineers uh, and talents. So everything needs to be uh, improved. Uh, it's not just about attracting uh, talents in the short run, it's just about producing a uh, talent pool, uh, which is going to be composed of foreign talents, mainland talents, and local talents. Top talent can be the invisible treasure of the city. As a financial hub in Asia, can Hong Kong find a way to get this treasure back? What do you think? Please drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of Hong Kong Inquirer.